Welcome all sammen, welcome to the channel where we use the historical sources to speak about Norse paganism and this is the final video in the Blut series where I'm speaking about the Norse pagan offering or sacrifice and I'm going over what all the sources from ancient times say about them and this is the last and most important video on the Blut series I took a little uh, break, I released the last ones, the last four about a month ago and took a little break on these because I was working on other things that you guys have been asking about but um, this one I'm answering the fifth and really the most important question about why blutes were practiced, why these pagan offerings were given. So here's a chart. There were basically five main blutes per year that had dates set in stone based around the full moon and then you had one type of blut that they could uh, practice anytime really. So one is the first day of winter, uh, October time. Um, this one, this is one of the winter nights, one of the Vetternatter, um, and this was the new year. So this could be done for a good year. Think of like a good luck and good fortune type of thing. Could be done to the Dísir, to the female spirits. Could be done to the elves, our ancestral spirits. And it can also be done for, you know, a good year and victory. Uh, so this is Think of this as the fresh start blue. This is the brand new year. Their new year started right around Halloween time. And um, this is basically the blue to cover the coming year. Um, that's what this one is. Then we have the second one in the midwinter. This is the Yule, uh, the Christmas blue, or whatever you want to call it. Uh, but it would have been in uh, late January, um, depending on the full moon. So this was usually done for a good harvest. It could also be done for swearing oaths, and it could be done uh, for toasting. Toasting to the gods, especially toasting to Odin and victory. Also toasting to Freyr and a good harvest. And third toast to king or chieftain. Uh, additional toasts uh, could be drank to dead kinsmen or, or friends or fallen in battle or, or anyone, relatives dead, uh, as it has said in Heimskringla there with the most detailed description. Then we have number three. This is late winter. Uh, this, uh, I'd like to call this one Disa Blut. We don't know the name for it really. Um, it's just, I, I call it Disa Blut because it's still um, it, it practiced in Sweden today. It's a little, uh, it's not a, it's not a pagan offering, but it's uh, it's basically like a market, a winter market that they call this thing. Um, and uh, basically, in Sweden, in pagan times, we we think that this was done only in Sweden in the late winter, um, and they kind of assembled all of their blutes into. Uh, one time of year right here at the late winter it seems because that's that's really when we hear about it the most and this was massive the whole country came there yeah, from all over the place and they offered all kinds of things and nine different species uh, and sorry nine animals from each species even human sacrifices and it can be done for all these reasons the female spirits harvest victory desir gods fertility fertility disease um, everything so they in Sweden they kind of combined all the blutes it seems at this one particular time it would have been in late February March based around the full moon there then we have the fourth one at the start of the summer that could be done for victory or peace that could be done for a good season and uh, also victory. Th this one is really uh, done for victory. The summer is here. We're about to start fighting again, you know. And uh, you know, this is this is halfway through the year, basically. It, it would have been uh, April time. So uh, the, these were usually done for victory for the coming uh, summer and any battles or competitions you had to come. Then we have five midsummer. Now. <sighs> This, this is the only mention we have of a blut from pagan times in the Midsummer. It's in Olav Tygvassen saga. And a lot of the experts argue that there was no blut in the Midsummer because in this story they clearly altered the date of the blut to fit uh, King Olav's uh, schedule. It's because this Christian King Olav basically agreed to participate in the pagan blut but they had to do it in the summertime, so they didn't have to wait many, many months uh, to do one. Um, and the, this blut was for victory. They had a battle coming, and Olav uh, seems like he wanted to create some unity between his pagan and Christian warriors, uh, because all of Scandinavia was not Christianized yet at that time. So the blut in the midsummer seems out of the normal. Uh, in certain situations, I'm sure it was acceptable, like if a battle was coming, uh, but... Um, 
yeah, always it would be tried to get uh, closer to the full moon as possible, but you know, it's probably not likely that uh, a midsummer bluth was practiced uh, every year on the regular, because I know a lot of modern pagans try to practice it now, but historically it's probably not how it was. Then we have the sixth and final reason, and that is for uh, any time uh, you could uh, practice that. Uh, as mentioned in Koinmak Saga, it definitely seems like it could be practiced any time, and it would be done usually to the elves, the ancestral spirits, and done for healing injuries or sickness. And that's about it for the sources, guys. I'm 99% sure that that's all of them, but if you guys have read any other reasons, let me know in the comments. And this just gives you a little idea as to how to practice your bluts in the most historically accurate way possible, and what the purpose of them uh, is. So as you can see, there were for sure certain reasons uh, to do a blut associated with certain times of year, but it definitely was not strict. These were all done at different times and different places. Norway, Sweden, Denmark, Iceland, they all did things slightly differently. So really, if you are practicing the blut in the modern day, it's probably fine to do these for whatever reason you see fit. I just want to say one thing, I see a lot of modern pagans uh, you know, doing blutes for very selfish reasons, and it's absolutely disappointing and not what this was meant to be. Just, you know, look at these reasons for doing uh, blutes here from the sources. It could be for a good harvest, to spirits, uh, for swearing oaths, it could be done for victory, for your king and for your people, warning against disease for your people. These reasons, they're all unselfish. They're all, like, you know, uh, blutes for a healthy nature and community and I've literally I've seen some people doing blutes for such selfish reasons I see him asking on online groups uh, you know guys help me I want to know what to offer <laughs> for, for a blue I have a really important job interview tomorrow <laughs> okay how about this oh I'm so depressed guys tell me how I can make an offering to the gods to help me lose weight <laughs> <laughs> I'm not kidding guys. I see posts like this in pagan groups all the time. It is not a pagan way of thinking. And I know I don't have to tell this to you guys watching my channel because all of you watching have been great. You're asking great questions and I uh, seem really educated and, and uh, really informed. So I don't have to tell you guys, but just for other people watching, you know, a blut is not a prayer or an opportunity to beg the universe for help. A pagan blut is an offering. It's an offering to nature and to the spirits. It's an offering, not a request. We give the offering to nature so that nature can thrive and then we humans in turn benefit from the success of nature and healthy spirits and things like that. And I know all of you know that in this video, you know, the fake pagans can stay in their Facebook groups and keep crying all they want, but I've been very happy with you guys watching my videos now. You've all been very informed and knowledgeable and asking good questions, so I know you're all serious. Thank you for watching. This is my last video on the Blut series, answering the most uh, important historical questions. I will be making more, going into more detail about each record we have uh, of, of different Blutes from pagan times and how Blutes were practiced uh, later on in history, actually, because they were practiced in more remote areas of Scandinavia all the way up until the 1800s, so this pagan tradition has kept going strong, and I'll speak about those stories uh, soon. That's about it for this video. This is Nestagong.